Today I'm going to show you how to make a blowout tool for your in-ground sprinkler system. And really all this is is a method to get air into your sprinkler system to blow it out for the winter. This can also be used if you have a house or a cabin or something like that uh, that is only used part of the year and you want to blow out the plumbing you can use the same uh, hose for that. Essentially all we have here is an old washing machine fill hose with one end cut off. See this is the end that would screw on to like the faucet and over here is an air fitting and if you look closely all this actually is are two air fittings just like this exactly like this put together jammed in the hose with a hose clamp very simple to do and I'm going to show you how to do this step by step I strongly suggest that you also invest in a ball valve like this okay because that way that can snap on over here and now you can turn not only turn on your air or shut it off but you can also regulate how much air you want you know you don't have to open it all the way what I opted to do when I built mine this is mine here it's the one I'm building today is for a friend uh, is I actually put this together using more quick disconnect fittings so this way if I have an air tool I can use it with that it just goes right in line with the regular air and you can use this for pretty much anything that you have uh, my friend did not want to go with the extra couplers and stuff like that so we're gonna basically plumb it all in together so I'll show you what we're gonna do next so here are all the parts that we're going to need you're gonna need two air fittings that are gonna screw together you'll notice that's not gonna work this is what my friend had on hand but he also happened to have a coupler like this so that's gonna screw in here and that will screw in over here but we're also going to incorporate the valve so that's gonna screw on over here like that and now that will screw on there one end is gonna fit inside the air hose and the other end is where your air supply gets hooked up so that's gonna be the inline valve as such this one is brand new so it's a little bit stiff but that works just fine so now we're gonna go ahead and plumb this together now the first thing that we need is a washing machine hose you might be able to use a garden hose that maybe got chopped in half or the end got cut off or run over with the lawnmower or something like that but the washing machine hose is a little bit different diameter it's a little bit smaller diameter and it's going to fit this air fitting a lot more comfortably than a garden hose this is an old washing machine fill hose and it was in service but you see there's a difference in the connections here this one is uh, not as nice as this one so we're gonna chop this one off here and utilize the rest of the hose there's a million different ways to cut this you can use a utility knife you can use um, a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder or Dremel tool might even be able to use a pair of uh, hedge clippers like this I'm gonna see if that's gonna work and we'll cut it just about right here just leave a little meat on this because it might still be good for something I don't know if it leaks or not but this is the crappier looking fitting so that's why I'm utilizing the other end for the tool so once we get snipped through this all the way I guess I need to sharpen these there we are so now that's cut off and we have a washing machine hose to a bare end and we're ready to go ahead and start assembling so with all of this screwed together and I did not do any of the fittings up tight yet basically this is gonna jam in here you'll see how it goes like that and then we're gonna put a hose clamp on that once we get it seated all the way down but first we're gonna make up the fittings here so again we have all these pieces and we have to put them together and they all just screw together but we need to use Teflon tape so we'll take the tape and I'll peel off some and we want to wrap this in such a way that when we screw it in 
the tail end of it is away from the direction we're screwing it. So we're going to screw this in clockwise, so we want the tail end pointing that way. So it's going to wrap around like this. We'll go right there, and we'll give this a few good wraps of Teflon. And then I'll snap it off. And that's pretty much what we have. Now I'm going to do the other side also because that also needs it. So now we're going to screw it together with the Teflon. Don't cross thread these, although it's probably pretty hard to do that. So there's that. Okay. And now this is going to screw into the valve. Really doesn't matter which way you go with this. And there we go. Now we need two wrenches, one here, one here, and that should cinch up enough on this both ways. I don't have two wrenches to fit this, so I got a pair of uh, vice grip pliers and an adjustable, and that will do the trick. And now we're just going to go ahead and tighten this all down. And I'll go a little bit more. Okay, I'm happy with that right there. So that's good. And now we have to wrap one more piece of Teflon to put on here. So those will screw together. So I'll wrap that and then we'll put that on. Okay, so now I have that screwed on, ready to go. And we're going to grab over it this joint because we've already tightened the rest. We don't want to over tighten that. And now that's going to screw the valve and the silver fitting together. So we'll go ahead and run that down. Okay, that seems pretty good right there. And that's it. That's all together. And now we have to put this into the hose. Now if you want, you can give this a water bath, which I like to do just to make sure that there's no leaks. So when I put that under water, we're going to watch. And this, of course, you need to make sure nothing else is leaking. We'll just hold it there, and if any bubbles rise, then something's leaking and needs to be retightened or reteflonned. But there are no leaks here whatsoever. I've already tested the silver end as well, and that has no leaks either. Now what I want to do is I want to put this in with the silver end into the hose and that way you have your valve just like that. This would plug into the air compressor and there you go. So we'll go ahead and get the hose and put everything together. Okay, so we have everything here together. Now there's a couple ways that you can put this together uh, if the fitting does not want to cooperate. It's going to be a tight fit if you use a washing machine hose and that's exactly what you want. So you can use a heat gun if you have one or a hair dryer to heat the hose and that might help it. Or you can just put some like dish soap on it. First thing that we're going to want to do is put the clamp on there. Just run that down. Don't worry about it for now. We'll get to it later. And now I'm just going to take the soap and just apply some in there. That should be fine. We'll go ahead and take that. Let me just move my soap out of the way. And we're going to go ahead and push it right on. And that went right up. No problem. That went all the way up. My cut is not exactly straight, but that's really not going to make a difference in the end. That's all on there and good. And then we're going to take our clamp, bring it back up, and then we're going to clamp it right there, just against the metal is what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this clamp down, and then I'm going to do something even nicer, which would be to cut off the extra tang there. 
This part is purely a matter of aesthetics. I think it would look best with the valve that way and the screw on the clamp in the same place, just like that. Now, of course, this valve is going to turn to go the other way, and it's also nice that it won't interfere with the clamp there. If it does and you did it backwards, it's no big deal. You can just flip it all around. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that clamp down there and get that nice and tight, and then we're going to zip off the excess. That should be pretty good. I'll snug that up with a uh, nut driver just to ensure that we're on there nice and tight. I have a Dremel here with a somewhat knackered blade, but it should work. And we're going to try to zip this off kind of as close as we can to the actual screw without really damaging anything. And then we can clean up any kind of burrs in that. Also might be a good idea if I run that there just so I don't slip and potentially damage that because everything is you know nice and new like that so I'm just gonna use this Dremel in case anybody's wondering no that doesn't hurt when the sparks hit me like a paper clip you could just bend the rest off and now that's a lot nicer now there's a couple of sharp edges there so I'm just gonna burnish them with this blade and I'll show you the finished product there is the finished product everything is nice and smooth I knocked the sharp edges off this shouldn't really get caught on anything most of that overhang is under the actual screw part you can operate your valve like that Everything works well, so your air would go in here, and this would screw onto the faucet nearest your sprinkler. In fact, I'll show you. So here's the end where the air will come out. And you can open it up and shut the air. It goes either way. When it crosses the path, it's off, and when it is parallel with it, it's on. So you can do a little bit of air, you know, like that, or more and more and more, and shut it off that way. So whatever works best for you when you're doing this, it doesn't matter which way you turn it. And that's it. So we have a nice, tight, airtight fitting on everything, and it's all there ready to blow out your plumbing or your sprinkler system. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons. That lets me know I did a good job making this video, and I can continue to provide them for you. Have a great day.